Well, on Valentine's Day, many will pop the question or say yes, but first you should pop the debt question. I know it's not very romantic, but it could save you in the long run. Travis Freeman is the president of Four Seasons Financial Education. He's here this morning with some money tips to make your marriage last. Good morning to you. Yeah, so we're here with good news. We're going to help you out. What types of money issues should be a concern? You know, I always say pop the debt question because if you are thinking about popping the big question mm -hmm. this Valentine's Day, you need to bring up the money talk. And if you bring this topic up and it turns out that your sweetheart has a spending problem and $10,000 in credit card debt, you might have a rough road ahead of you. So the point is bring it up be honest with each other and see where there's some there's some sacrifice and some things you can cope on. All right, what if you plan on having children? Because as we all know, they can be very expensive. Yes, <laughs> yes they can. And it, it, obviously, if, you've, if you're getting to the point of marriage, you're already married, mm -hmm. hopefully you've already talked yes. about this, but if, <laughs> if children are in the mix and you want to send them to college, let's just say your parents sent you to college mm -hmm. and you want to do the same thing for your children, then you might want to start setting away hundreds of dollars a month to save for that big goal. But I find just the opposite with some parents, maybe they had skin in the game, they paid for their own college, mm -hmm. and they want to bestow that same lesson of discipline in their kids. So if one or both of you want to pay for college, you better start saving now for that big goal. And if you're upgrading or buying a house soon, leave some room in that budget. I need hundreds of dollars a month to save for that goal. It's a big one. Yeah, and you mentioned, Travis, a key word, which is budget. And I think a lot of married couples, even today, they may budget for their wedding, but after that, they don't have a budget. No. And, and you know what? I, I, I teach hundreds of people a year on this topic. Mm -hmm. I, I know budgets are no fun. But 20 minutes of your time can give you 20 years of happiness in the future. I'm serious about this. So what you do, this is almost a comical exercise. You and your significant other fill out separate budgets. Don't cheat. Don't look at each other. Mm -hmm. Then bring those budgets together and see what they look like. I mean, immediately you're going to see who's the spender, who's the <laughs> saver. Maybe they didn't earmark anything for college or retirement savings. But by doing this, at least you get to bring those together and, again, sacrifice. If you don't have a budget to fill out, a template budget, go to our website. My staff will send you one for free at financialbootcamp.net. Someone's got 1000 for shoes. Someone's got 10000 for golf. Okay, bring it together and compromise. It compromises it. And then you say have a money anniversary, which I think is a great idea. Yeah, you know what? It might sound hokey, but trust me, this stuff works. So we, we have our regular anniversaries, our wedding anniversaries, and we get to look at each other's eyes and think about how much fun mm -hmm. we've had and really to think about all the goals and the things we have in front of us. Why not do that with your money? You have to. If you have a money anniversary and at least once a year you're going through looking at savings and retirement, investments and wills and trust and everything, making sure you're staying on track, that's how you get to financial success. And I'll tell you, financially successful couples didn't get there by stumbling into success, they planned for it. So either do it yourselves on your money anniversary or have someone else, a money coach or a certified financial planner, mm -hmm. come in and intervene to help keep you accountable. That's the key. Yeah, and money continues to be a huge sticking point in marriages, doesn't it? And many times why marriages break up. Yep. Unfortunately, it is the number one cause of stress in relationships. In fact, many times as a, as a public speaker, mm -hmm. I'll meet people in my audiences that come up and talk about these things. So again, be honest about it. Be open. If you need someone to come in and intervene, that will help you. But uh, you have to plan and focus over the long term. All right. Some great advice for us this morning. Travis Freeman, president of Four Seasons Financial Education. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Margie. All right. For more information also, and we're going to give you a link to that website. We can get a budget sent to you, he said. Yeah, All right. We'll have that for you at stlmoms.com for free. John and Randy, that's like some pretty free. good advice. Yeah, really good, good stuff.